Hello and hello and welcome to Daily Politics on Trust TV. I'm Hamza Idris. On Tidbits tonight, the Supreme Court has adjourned hearing on a motion by seven states seeking to join suit, challenging the general design policy as core plaintiffs. Trust TV reports that seven more states indicated interest in joining the suit originally initiated by Kaduna, Kogi, and Zamfara states against the Attorney General of the Federation. And uh, while Bayelsa and Edo states applied to be joined as co-defendants in the suit. Take a look. Kaduna, Zamfara, and Kogi states first approached the Supreme Court challenging the federal government cashless policy and 10 February deadline for the face out of 200, 500, and 1,000 old Naira notes from circulation. They prayed the Apex Court to restrain the central bank from enforcing the February 10th deadline. The Supreme Court had, on the 8th of this month, granted an ex parte order directing that both old and new Naira notes should be in circulation pending the hearing of the substantive matter scheduled for today. At the Zoom hearing on Wednesday, Katsana, Lagos, Cross Rivers, Ogun and Sokoto applied to be joined as co plaintiffs while Edo and Bayelsa sought to be co-dependents. We are working towards solving this problem. It's a national problem and we are working towards solving this problem. There are in two sides. We are affected on both sides. We are trying to solve it. Please. I want you to know the, the, the government is not deliberately frustrating uh, the, the plaintiffs. This is a problem that we are trying to solve. With a little time, it will be solved. The court order of 8th of February restraining the uh, defendant is still subsisting and the court confirmed now and the implication of that is that the old notes still remain as legal tender in this country. The uh, policy or directive given by the CBM governor becomes inconsequential in the light of the fact that the court has extended the lifespan of the interim order it granted on the 8th of February to the fact that the old notes and the new notes, all of them are legal tenders in Nigeria. The seven-man panel of Supreme Court granted motions to accommodate the interested parties and those with similar applications and ask them to consolidate and harmonize their positions and deposit such with the court registry for hearing. On its earlier restraining order, the panel of justices maintained that the order subsists pending determination of the matter. And, and sadly, protest erupted in no fewer than four states following the Supreme Court's adjournment of the case bordering on the February 10 deadline for the use of the all notes. Nigerians who expected a definite position from the court were disappointed with the adjournment, which leaves them no choice but to cope with the pains of surviving with no, few, no new notes and the old notes being rejected. Angered by the decision and the silence from the presidency, some youths took to the streets to vent their frustration. Here are our excerpts. In Ibadan, the Oyo state capital, the protesters burnt tires across major roads of the ancient city, barricaded major routes and disrupted economic activities across the state. Some of them urged the central government to urgently address the situation before things get out of hand. Price of goods has increased. Then we also have fuel scarcity. This is enough to incite Nigerians to come on street to send this administration back home because this is not what they promised Nigerians in 2014 when they are coming. For now, the, uh, you understand the governor uh, is on his uh, campaign tour and uh, is, is someone who is very concerned about the welfare of the people. And uh, I believe very strongly uh, uh, the governor is going to address uh, the situation to the best of his capacity. In Delta State, angry youth set two commercial banks' ATMs on fire, vandalized campaign materials, and vowed that elections will not hold until the crisis is addressed. 
The police later mounted roadblocks around the area to stop the protesters from burning any government property. Meanwhile, the state governor and vice presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Ifani Okoa, has appealed to citizens of the state and Nigerians to remain calm amidst the scarcity of the new Naira notes. Okoa, in a statement by the State Commissioner for Information, Charles Anyago, in Asaba, called on the Central Bank of Nigeria and the monetary authorities to take further steps in increasing the money supply in the system. The Naira note scarcity protest also rocked Ilori, the Kwara state capital, as protesters barricaded and made bonfires on some major streets, such as Gambari, Ogidi, Okoluo, among others. The angry protesters said the scarcity of Naira has brought untold hardship to them, as they have been unable to carry out any business transaction. Filling station, they didn't collect the old money from us, and the bank too, they didn't collect anything from us. So we, we are a driver, we are driving a motor, but we don't have option to go to anywhere, because when we go to filling station now, they will not accept the money from us. So everybody are facing. In Edo State, no fewer than three persons lost their lives during the violent protest that erupted on Wednesday morning in parts of Benin City. The protesters attempted to break into the state branch of Central Bank of Nigeria, located along Akpakpava Street, a commercial nerve center in Benin City, where most commercial banks are also located. Thereafter attacked some commercial banks located in the area. Protesters in various parts of the country went in their anger. We hope we find a final solution to this stalemate. Moving to other things, presidential candidates earlier on Wednesday had an opportunity to share their agenda, to chart a new course and address challenges facing the region. They spoke during the Northern Elders Forum General Assembly, which was held in Abuja. Vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, uh, Dati Ahmed, attended the meeting. The General Assembly is coming few days to the elections. Little wonder, therefore, that leaders seize the opportunity to examine prospects and challenges of the North in the last decade and generate ideas and strategies that should chart its electoral fortune in few weeks. Where you see the problem, we see the solution. Our records, our histories have, have shown we were able to create wealth. We did not derive wealth from government. So Nigerians, Nigeria is in the ICU. When a patient is in the ICU, you need a competent hand. That competent hand, I have no doubt, is our candidate, Atiku Abubakar. The Vice President of the APC, um, it indicates that the North is regenerating. The North is regenerating. And that is the key issue here in this campaign. We are not here to campaign, and we don't intend to campaign because they say it's only if you hear somebody is selling uh, honey that this honey is sweet, don't go buy that honey because there is something wrong with that honey. Nobody advertises honey because honey advertises itself. We have got it wrong, but this is the right time to fix it. We are tired of all of us, all of you, all making us fight one another. We want to work together to make this contraption called the North. The convener of the Northern Elders Forum, Professor Angu Abdullah, speaks of the intendment of the General Assembly. Who are the cause of the unhappiness in Northern Nigeria. And therefore, we have to resolve, we have to take a decision in terms of what has to be done to recover this lost ground. Let us be sincere at the crossroad that we are. There is no sentiment about it. We are, as a country, at crossroad. And that's why you are here in the spirit of Sadawna, in the spirit of Tafawa Balewa, in the spirit of our dependency on the presidency and the Nigerian government. It's our problem. We have been at the center for too long and we didn't do much. And that's why we are always struggling to be at the center. The forum said it's registered pressure to identify with a particular candidate, choosing instead to give a chance to share their ideas for the nation's progress. No, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. 
those were prominent northern leaders trying to charge a common cause for the region and Nigeria at large. This and much more will form tonight's conversation on daily politics and joining us to share his perspectives and also bring us up to speed with the activities of their campaign. We have uh, Kenneth Okonko with us in the studio. <laughs> Welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for inviting me and uh, thank you viewers at home yeah, for Kenneth, uh, joining us. It's actually a spokesperson Labour Party Obideti Presidential Campaign Council. Yes, you. you've seen it. Yes. How will you describe Nigeria today? With one word. Okay. Failure. On whose side? On the side of both the leaders and the followers. Nigeria is a blessed country. That means nobody can blame God for anything that is happening in Nigeria. But we are a religious people. So we always attribute almost everything to God. You know, people go to mosque. They go to church but they don't go to God in Nigeria. No nation that is going to God will get to this level of extreme degradation and deprivation, extreme misery, extreme poverty, heading towards state collapse. No nation that has been going to God. So this has exposed us as religious people without the fear of God. We must learn to start going to God. Not okay, let's start. Let's start with the let's start with the, the Supreme Court. You know, Thank Nigerians you. expected something out of that big room, and nothing yet up till this hour. And yes. and you've seen the report. You took to the streets because judiciary, of course, should be the last yes. port of call. Yeah. Yes. You know, when you do not dispense justice the way it is supposed to be, you get into confusion. But I have to issue this mm -hmm. as an advice. The Supreme Court is the last hope yes. of every Nigerian. We always use the word common man. No, in a democracy, the Supreme Court is the last hope of every citizen. Okay, irrespective of his Whether you're common or, or uncommon, whether you are a woman or a man, whether you are aged or young, rich or poor, the Supreme Court is the last hope of every citizen. Mm. Let me issue this counsel. Okay. The Supreme Court is established to be able to write justice on black and white. And if they don't perform that, they are simply making room for ignorant men to write it on the ground with blood. All right, I, I am saying this or asking you this because I don't want right. to sound prejudicial, right? But um, in the last couple of days, Nigerians yes. have been looking forward. They've been very patient saying, let's wait for the day, which ought to be today, right? Oh, yes. And shortly after adjournment, people took to the street. You, you can see, in fact, there are reports that some people have been killed. Good. Now, the reason is very simple. Okay. If the Supreme Court, for instance, had declined jurisdiction from the one, we wouldn't be in this confusion. Okay. Now, if you assume jurisdiction, you would have to make your orders very clear, very distinct, and very direct. Now, the Supreme Court cannot be that direct. Why? The CBN is not a party to this suit. Mm. Which it ought to. But, um, Mr. Good. Kenneth, if, some Nigerians yes, or if you make people CBN, are actually saying yes. that by taking the federal government is as good as taking the, the central bank. Sorry, it is not. With profound respect. And now I talk as a lawyer. The CBN, by the act that established it, is not an agent of the federal government. It is an agency of the Federation. Okay. Now, Section 1.3 of the CBN Act made it clear that CBN, in order to achieve its mandate under the Act and under the Banks and Other Financial Institutions Act, mm -hmm. must 
act as an independent body. All right. So, if you want the CBN to carry out your order mm -hmm. directly, you must give it a direction. Now, if you give the federal government, mm -hmm. the risk is that you cannot hold the CBN governor accountable for it. Because you are now making him an agent mm, of the okay. federal government. Meaning, you have compelled him to take orders from the federal government, which he is not supposed to, except in specific areas that the act delineated. Like in the issue of currency. Because democracy means there should be a check and balance. Mm. So even if an institution is independent, yeah. there has to be check and balance. He simply said, if the CBN yeah. wants to change the currency, it has to seek approval of the president. It did not even say ministry. Yeah. So the president, so that the, the president does not become unaware, because the president is supposed to defend, whether in the area of security or welfare, by policy, the citizens. So the act made it a CBN should get the approval of the president. Mm. Having gotten the approval, the CBM goes back to its independence to carry in out the this. discharge of its functions. Okay, I want us to distance the, the judiciary in this conversation. In an yes. ideal democracy, should we go to court to solve issue relating to changing era? Good. That is the hypocrisy okay. and the failure of the APC government. And does it not worry you that it is the governors of APC that are going to court to challenge the federal government of APC? You know what that means? No. There is no effective government in place. There is confusion among the tiers of government. There is confusion among the arms of government. Now, let us see the confusion in this particular policy. When the CBN governor brought out this policy first. The Minister of Finance said she's not aware the same government. The President went ahead and gave directive the same government. Mm. The DSSS declared the CBN governor wanted yes. the same government. The President had to use the army to be defending the CBN government. The same government. The APC governors took the federal government to court the same government. Mm. And now they have brought confusion, intractable, upon the economy of Nigeria. Now, I'm a student of management. Okay. I was taught as a student of management that whenever there is a confusion at the corporate level of any institution, mm. the confusion spreads down oh my God. to all the institutions. Everywhere. All. all. That is what is happening so it, in Nigeria. So this is what we are... They have breached managerial functions. They have breached legal functions. They have breached the social order. They have breached everything. Under the APC government, we are racing towards state collapse. Okay, we saw two states joining the federal government of sorts. Two more APC states. No, I'm talking about the states that actually yes. are rising against this PDP, right? Mm, rising against. Yes. Okay, that's joining to oppose. Exactly. Uh, because I heard about Ondo. Yeah. Which is still APC. Yeah. You know, then I heard about um, some of that, you know. Good. If a do is coming in, uh, I wouldn't do. I've not read the affidavit. But like you said, why solve a political problem, a policy problem? Yeah, taking it in to the court. court. That is why you're not getting any good judgment. Then who should speak out now? The person that will speak out is the Nigerian people. That's why I said the problem is both as in with followers. But you can see Nigerians, because they have limited why options, they have Nigerian? started taking to the street. No, that is why you have democracy. Why do you want to take to the street when in 10 days' time you have the unique opportunity to vote all these people out? Why would you want to go and shed the blood of another person or your own blood. So you think they shouldn't have taken to this? The whole essence of democracy is peaceful change of power from one leader to the other, from one party to the other, from one generation to the other. We've not had 
a clear and a very simple choice like we have in this election. In 10 days time, my advice, let every Nigerian channel his energy towards voting out the competent and dishonest APC with its PDP partner in crime and in failure. Okay, why I, why I said this is because candidate of PDP, Atiku Abubakar. Yes. Unequivocally, you know, he said that there should be no extension. It's like your candidate is not really straightforward on this. What is the position of Labour Party? The position of Labour Party is very clear. Okay. Rule of law. What is the rule of law here? The rule of law is that the federal government has the power to the exclusion of the state government and local government on the issue of currency, coinage, and legal tender. By item 15, part 1 of second schedule of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So if they take a policy, the state government has no power to go to Supreme Court to invoke the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Because by section 53A, the state government has no power in the exercise of its executive powers. It has no power to impede or prejudice the exercise of the powers of the federal government. So what the labor is saying is that every party should look at the law and maintain the rule of law. Our one item in our seven-point agenda mm. is restructuring the polity through like the labor effective, party. yes, through effective and institutional reforms mm. to entrench rule of law. Okay, before we get to the, the rule of law, yes, you see, we brought lawyers here yeah. and politicians. Some said, of course, the governors have the right to go to court because if the federal government is so insensitive yes. to the feelings of Nigerians, governors should go for the rescue. And that is why they went to the court. Yes, they have the right to go to the court of first instance. The problem here is not, not going Supreme to court. court. Yes. <laughs> Very problematic, yeah. but that's it. A, a son they went to the court here, to invoke issues of states. Yes. When you have federal and state, they just go to the Supreme Court. No, okay. with respect to the son, we're talking about section 232, subsection 1 of the Constitution. And he said that the Supreme Court has original jurisdiction to the exclusion of any other court in any dispute involving the federation and the states or between states if when you hear if is a conditional qualification if and only in so far as that dispute involves a question on which the existence and extent of a legal right depends. Okay. Now, the state has no legal right whatsoever on any issue that has to do with currency, coinage, and legal tender. So which rights are they going for the Supreme Court to interpret? Political expediency, maybe, yeah. to save their people from Good. extinction. Because Nigerians are actually facing imminent extinction. God bless you. People now, could not attend to their health in hospitals. Some cannot go to work. And it's like the country is getting grounded by good, a minute. Good. Thank you for bringing that. And that questions the intention of these people that are going to court. They say the primary purpose of government yes. is the security and welfare of its citizens. In Kaduna, for instance, yeah. people have been massacred, killed, by bandits, by terrorists, everywhere. The Kaduna state governor did not go to court. That's terrifying. He did not take federal government to court. And that's the primary responsibility of government. So it's an indictment going to court because of Naira now. The only thing that takes APC and PDP to court is their quest for power and money. And you, you will expatiate on, on this, <laughs> Kenneth. We will go on a short break. Viewers, don't go away. We have Kenneth in the studios. Thank you.
Nigeria, now we country. If you see that the party, now one man be a choice. At last, the elections are here. Let's turn out en masse on election day and vote Ashiwa Yubola Tinubu as president of Nigeria for a renewed hope and a better Nigeria. Vote APC, the party that shows a broom. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, you are watching Daily Politics on Trust TV. Do well to follow the conversation across our social platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and watch us live on YouTube. Yes, Kenneth, we have you in the studio, spokesperson of the Labour Party. Before we went on break, you said the only thing yes. that can take PDP and APC to court oh, yes. is their, is their interest. For power or money. You think it's not altruistic on behalf of Nigerians? No. If it <laughs> or is nationalistic? If it is altruistic, okay. why have they not gone to court when Asu was at home for more than nine months? Do you know the danger in keeping these youths at home? This is what we are seeing now. For nine months. Taking laws into their hands. That is increasing social pressures for crime. Do you know that more than 54 point something percent of Nigerian youths are unemployed? Do you know that 133.3 million Nigerians are suffering from multidimensional poverty? No access to good sanitation, no access to basic nutrition, no access to education, to health care, to employment. These are social pressures of crime. Do you know that Nigeria is the least competitive economy in Africa? With Despite our GDP? <laughs> no, with very low total factor productivity and export competitiveness index. Do you know that Nigeria, the human capital index, we are 168 out of 173. Oh God. In a nation that is blessed with 923,000 square kilometer of arable land, 850 kilometer of coastal line do you know that if you develop our fishing capability we can feed the world just carry the ship go into Not to talk the of atlantic ocean cattle and sheep and all that my principal and analyzed it 75 billion dollars is what you have in the cattle chain economy and nigeria is supposed to be having one billion dollars cattle alone cattle he has already promised the north that there will be full exploration of the cattle economy. Okay, that is your candidate. Yes, Peter. Okay, okay, now some people are These alleging. These potentials are People wasting. are alleging that your candidate is actually a bit quiet. And they are not going to court. Because of all any of those things. Okay. But, no, but when want... the Naira that will prevent them from buying votes is now to be taken away from them, they are rushing to the court. And they are saying, the citizens, let me tell you okay. what... Is what is right in law. If your citizens are suffering, mm. the state has no right to come as state. The state should sponsor the citizens that are suffering to go to the court of first instance and challenge the harshness and the legality of the law. But we are now seeing the governor taking the lead. To the Supreme and you are court. insisting it's not altruistic. No, it cannot be. I am telling you that APC, when they introduced this, this uh, policy, I said it will fail. We had Buba Galadima yes. here Good. some few days ago. He, right. he alleged that a certain governor had 20 billion, 22 billion of Good. all notes in his house. Well, I do not have any empirical evidence, but they can do it. Oh, God. Because they've been doing it. So what, in what, Nigeria. what thing will, will you do differently? Because yes. there is this allegation that your candidate is actually mm. a bit quiet or being circumspect in yes. speaking out about the Naira issue because you are going to gain from this confusion. What are you going to gain? When they say they were going yeah, to... Yeah, because they don't have money to campaign. Hold on. When they were... Did you need to have money to buy people? Even for logistics, for instance. And, the, and they are suffering it and we are not suffering it. So how are you doing it? Good. Let me come in. 
when they introduced this policy, yes, I said it was going to fail. And why? Because every other thing APC has done has failed. So this one will also fail. It has already failed. But why are you not crying seriously? We are weeping. You don't understand. In the bedroom? No. Okay. Let me tell you something. Okay. I told you, once you are doing something within the embers of law, yeah. it is only through law that you can change it. Or else the next thing will be anarchy. So what we are saying is, please, let everybody maintain the rule of law so that we don't go to the rule of the jungle. Okay. Not that we are enjoying it. How can you be enjoying a failed system? Now, they say they gave us nine, three months. That's 90 days. Mm -hmm. Where is the new Naira? It's not there. For three weeks, I have not touched any one Naira in my pocket. Oh, my God. Whether old or new. I went to the supermarket to buy something. Unfortunately, my transfer was not working. I had to call my wife to transfer money into the place that I had bought. One young man smiled on to, up to me and said, Sorry, sir, I have paid for you. Oh, God. He, because he, he sympathized. He just you. looked at me. He said, I love what you're doing. What is his name? Musa. Where is he from? Khan. My friend, wow. our problem in this country is not ethnicity, it's not religion. We love each other in this country. It's dishonest and incompetent leadership. We must rise up as a country. So where, are, where, where, where are we going to get Where are you leader? from? And vote out these people and vote LP for the sake of survival of Nigeria. What is happening to Nigeria now is an existential threat. Do an Aosa man buy bread cheaper no. than an Igbo man? Okay, let me give you the hypocrisy of these leaders. Adam Shoshomole went to address NLC. Mm -hmm. They booed him out. He went to Ring Road to talk, to campaign. They booed him out. Well, Ring Road. Know? Yes, Bini. He, he, Yet, okay. he assembled thugs in his house and told them that Anambra State is their problem. I want you to understand. Is this an allegation or he said this publicly? It is there. The video is there. Okay. When you assemble talks and told them they are going to intimidate the Anambra people out of Edo to tell them that Edo is not Anambra. He forgot that the Edo people intimidated him and his principal out of Edo and brought a picture, turned the face of his principal and labeled the back, Edo no be Lagos. <laughs> so you see, when these people... Yeah fail and their people are resisting them they resort to ethnic manipulation to manipulate the people to divide them so that they can rule them but this is what some of them are actually accusing your party of doing trying to manipulate the process yes. line of religion line of ethnicity allegedly good is that not hypocritical okay that apc That's government plain. is in the federal government mm. They made the policy of currency, coinage, and legal tender. My principal has no part or party in this government. He's a private citizen like you and I. He's suffering it. He has a campaign to carry out. But you know, because he's a man of rule of law, mm. he would obey the law whenever it is brought. He's not accumulating cash. Everybody working for labor has been working as a volunteer. So it is not affecting This has remained a serious question. Yeah. Good. Working as volunteers. Yes. So it's not affecting him. You think this thing is not affecting your candidate? See, as a Nigerian, it is affecting everybody. Yeah. As a politician, a professional Nigerian, as a, prof a professional politician, it is not affecting him because he's not a professional politician. He's a professional in politics. He's not accumulating <laughs> money to buy votes. So to that extent, it's not affecting him because he has not been buying votes. He has not been buying people and does not intend to buy people. Once the transfers can be going on, once everything can be going on in accordance with the law, he will not have complaint. This is the only complaint we have. Okay. If you say you are changing old Naira for new Naira, having taken people's old Naira, give them the new Naira. 
This is where the CBN is failing. And why I said the policy is going to fail is not because it's not a good policy. But there is this allegation that it's the politicians very good are not actually complaining because yes. they are either owners of banks or mm. have significant shares in banks, including your candidate. No, they are. That's why I said those ones whose intention is to buy votes yes. are complaining. But the politicians who do not have such intention will not complain. Tell me any politician of that kind that will not be finding money to feed, that will not be paying his driver. Now will not be paying. All those states you say they went to court. Have they been using cash to pay their people? Is it not through electronic transfer? So how is it affecting the state? That's why I say there is no legal right of the state to protect. So when they go and say their people are suffering, hypocrites. Yeah, so what is happening now that in APC, for instance, they are actually at war with each other, right? Yes. So why? Dele Mahmoud so. called it World War. And he said what's going World on. War. Yes. <laughs> wow. He said, what's going on. he said what is going on in PDP is civil war. And what is going on in APC is war. What war. about the Labour Party? Peace. How? <laughs> Productivity. Prosperity. Security. Unity. That's what's going on in Labour Party. But in the Southwest, the entire Labour Party structure collapsed into APC. So how will you coincide this? Honestly, I was actually thinking that you're saying that the entire structure of other parties collapsed into Labour. No, what we saw on telly, yes. what was reported was that entire Labour Party structure yeah. collapsed into APC. Did your station report it? We did. That the entire... Because there was, yeah, because there was a statement, I mean, a, a okay. press conference where their, their leader, I have yes. his name here. Which, please, call the name. Yeah, I will. All right. I will. Let me help you before you've been called. Yeah. Because you may call of one Banji Omotosha. Oh, she is the one, yeah. Bomo, oh, yeah. is she the one? Yeah, yeah Good. of course. Labour Party expelled this person two to three years ago. Who? The man, I just mentioned the name. I did not You mean he's a new poster? He's just an imposter that will still report to us. I didn't meet him in Labour. Let me tell you who collapsed into Labour. You're, you're, are you saying he's Our not a member of the party? I said two, three years ago was expelled from Labour Party. I did not meet this person in Labour Party. Tell us I don't more. Know tell him. us more of what happened because people can just come and I am telling you that APC, oh, haven't they done worse things? I told you before that whatever APC tells about itself is a lie. They are compulsive liars. Are you saying they were planted by APC to do what they did in the, in the Southwest? Do I need to tell you? Which structure collapsed? Let me tell you who collapsed. All right. Our present DG yes. in Labour Party collapsed from Zenith Labour Party, abandoned his senatorial ticket. We reported that. Also. Good for the sake of a new Nigeria and collapsed into Labour Party. That's the, what I know. He's the highest So as far member. as these people are concerned, they are non entity. Fake. Falsehood. Then what about the gubernatorial candidate of your party in Kano? You he said too. Kano. Yeah. Did you say Southwest? I thought you would give me another name in Southwest. Well, it's a whole structure. I'm Good. I'm done with that, yeah. Good. Okay, so Kano. I want you to know that. Now, in Kano, go and check. The person that is calling himself gubernatorial candidate, how many posters have you seen that he made that he is contesting for election? How many jingles have you had him make? How many? Now, this person came into labor. Mm. It was about three months ago. As a substitute. Okay, this person. Yes, we had to remove so, the person we have already planted. To give him. To give him. Because of his no degree, degree, most likely. Good. Because of what he told us, that he and will do that is passionate and good. Without knowing that some of them, I said this thing before. Immediately OB entered Labour Party. Labour Party became very popular. So the other politicians who saw him as a threat from the one started planting their own people to take over certain positions so that powerful people do not get into that, those positions to contest with their candidates. Waiting for the right time, for those ones to withdraw, to create the impression that something is happening. Let me tell you, our structure is not in the party. Our structure is not in the candidates. Our structure is in the people. And the people of Nigeria will deliver. Based on our manifesto, 
which has been explained by my principal at all times. Of course, I will ask you to say a word or two on that, but you will also explain what is happening in Adamawa, in yes. parts of, you know, Bauchi and all that. But I will we'll not be surprised break. when we'll I will not be surprised one yes, Kenneth. or two more candidates do the same. All right. Well, you tell us. Good. <laughs> because we'll go on a short break, and when we return, the conversation continues. Don't go away. Ina ka kete na Nigeria. Ba kete la ba na njaga ba ahamu bola tunu ba ayazu shiki ya ba kanga ba achiki enta kara akasa Nigeria. Diki de sasa na asena sana mukama mulki de kuma sabu nde waraka kana yao alumu na Nigeria. Njaga ba shiki de sasa na asena sana hanya yinta tala ba tete lang azini kasa na Nigeria. Njaga ba bola ahamu tunu ba maga ba tasa kuche shia kura rendere ba ndezi chitu ra yao alumu na Nigeria. Shikara tete wubira shida oku ba tunda wa de marta ba ili mino ma kiwe de ba tunsa ro a Nigeria. Yuko mi de samaro matasa ayoku ni maga na. Patara ada zaman kecondoh. Haka ina kebutin di di tu ada kanan kebiru dan mebiak adi ni dapat dapat kesan aja ya. Di nama maga baca sekecil jaga bersih ke kanggal. Itu yang sedang masa ni nama kita hanya sani. Dungu abar jaya abaya. Am serde itu cik jaga bola ahmu tu nubushi ni kangkat. Di chicken dungu dua tengah entah kara aja ya. Di kini mesti kau bencang kasar dek kanjut sedi kesawapan. One sab oni dega stasiun saras ari dah sadar wah nak kau meeting ya ke nama zat bencu gabang kesan aja biar APC. Welcome back once again. This is Daily Politics on Trust TV. We have Kenneth Okonko in the studio. He's the spokesman of OB Deti Presidential Campaign Council of the Labour Party. Welcome back. Again. Thank you. Yes, I was saying that you, you, you said, oh, Dele Momodo, right? You quoted yes. him saying PDP in civil, civil war. war. APC war. Then what is yours? Because you also have issue in Adama. We don't need war in this country. But what are you having now? People defecting, people yes. disowning the Labour Party. And I all wish that. that is what is happening in APC and PDP. I wouldn't talk because it's normal. What is happening in PDP are going to delay moment is civil war. Five governors, not candidates. Mm. Five governors plus one said their candidate, Atiku Abubakar, is unfit to be the president of Nigeria. We're talking about Wiki, Autumn, and the rest. Uguanye, mm. Ibazo, yeah. Sheiba Kide. They have national spread, north, south, east, west, saying that Atiku Abubakar should not be the president of Nigeria. That is done fit. Corroborating what President Obasan just said, that Atiku Abubakar is a man you cannot trust with power because of his propensity and insatiable appetite for corruption. Obasanjo talking because of his lack of transparency, but his because people say of his they poor are, judgment. He transparent. He has been proven. No, he has been who? taken to court more than one hundred times. Nobody has won. taken him to court. He's he the has one. A book on that. No, Kenneth. he's the one taking people to court. The same person saying taking to court is but anti was he, was, was he buying the the judgments no. there? No, because he was brought out clean. Now. No, no, no. Let me tell you, if you want me to go into the No, I don't want case, you to go deep into that. Okay, but, but let me just give you an example. All right. His give own us. party, PDP, yes. they set up a panel to try him for corrupt activities and found him guilty and say he's not qualified to run for presidency. Now, he went to court. And the court did not exonerate him from corruption. The court simply said, no, this is an administrative panel. It should not have the same power as a court. That it is only the court that has power to stop him. Meaning that their decision that he is, cannot run cannot be allowed. But you know that time, all those that got seats or they got but, their seats back, it was because Obasanjo allowed mm -hmm. them. Maybe he, he felt threatened by um, Atiku's pedigree and all that. I am not aware of that because Atiku, being a serial anti-party person, 
was a vice president of PDP when he contested for the presidency in another party. But but is your candidate so I am also surprised. A, a man of many parties? Because he was in PDP, yes. he went to Abga, Good. now in Labour Party. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between your candidate and, and Atiku? Oh. Only maybe Tinubu, he said he hasn't Tinubu, changed a party Tinubu, even No, once. Tinubu prostituted in party more than them. <laughs> he started with AD, joined APP, went back to AD, Entered AC. So from AC so they're to all ACN, beds of the same. From ACN to APC. How many times? Meaning they are all beds of the same. I said it is they are not beds of the same feather. Okay. Nothing stops you from moving from a party to the other. Atiku Son case was that he was still the vice president of PDP. Yeah. And contested election as a presidential candidate of another party. This is the height of anti-party. So who is going to gain no. from the posture of this G5 because today yes Tinubu was in Portacot yes he was given elaborate welcome yes he was hosted at the government house and mm -hmm. all that yes because I was thinking you people thought that it will be Labour Party would it be a disadvantage good. to let you let me let me tell you something okay. like I said first of all the people are our structure then secondly if the G5 mm. leaves Atiku because they are saying that there is ethnic injustice, that the power ought to shift to the South mm -hmm. by their constitution with their right. Preamble 2D of the PDP constitution, section 73C of the PDP constitution, they are absolutely correct. Nigeria cannot be stable when after a Fulani speaking, not a Muslim, yeah. whom I campaigned for, for you to know I don't have a problem with that, to be succeeded by another Fulani speaking. You campaigned for Buhari. Yes, I did, yeah. for the second time. Telling you, I don't have a problem with that. But I have a problem with the same ethnic, religious, and sectional person succeeding the same person in Nigeria that we're looking for stability and carrying everybody along. In what way so, will your candidate be different from that? Good. Like I was saying, we cannot contemplate Colin Tinobu. And I'll give you an example. You are my brother. You yeah. are a Muslim. Yeah. If in Nigeria you have... Three minutes. You have... A Christian presidential candidate, mm. Christian vice presidential candidate, Christian Senate president, Christian speaker of the House of Representatives, Christian deputy speaker of the House of Representatives, Christian national chairman, at a time that the chief justice of Nigeria is a Christian. Will you accept it? It's not acceptable. That is what is happening. Section 222E of the Constitution condemns any party that is heading towards a religious party. That is what APC is doing. Section 15, subsection 1, subsection 2, subsection 3D, subsection 4 of the Constitution condemns it. No, no Muslim, no Christian that wants stability in this country will ever support a party that has one religion heading the legislative, heading the judiciary, heading the uh, 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 um, uh, the judiciary, judiciary, legislative, and executive. That's what is happening in APC now. And they have railroaded Ahmed Lawan to come back, meaning they are positioning him for the Senate president. Again, is this yes. an allegation? Or no, you, you cannot bring the Senate president back and make him a floor member. They are positioning uh, Bajabi Amira. Win. Yeah, they are, they're they are positioning Bajabi Amira. David Mack yes. was all, you know, and, back to and, the, and his the, coming back was useless. That's why he didn't contest again. He came back to be Senate President. We also have Speaker you know? Ogara, yeah. Good. Yeah. They came back to take over the position. It was when it was not possible. Yeah. And, and they, they became redundant. They, become, they became redundant. You can't be bowing. You can't be, not be an Oba and be bowing to another Oba. So while rounding up, I want you, you to know? clear air. What I'm saying is that, that your party is yes. also, you know, racing on the back of ethnicity, religion, and all that. How? Our vice presidential candidate is a Muslim from Kaduna. So, on what basis our presidential candidate is a Christian from the South, balancing the ticket by the concept of power shift? The North has the power now, a not a Muslim, and is shifting to the South, where a Christian Southerner is going to be the next president with a not a uh, uh, Muslim. So, where is it? 
we are the most balanced and apart from that a candidate that has promised you to secure and unite nigeria that has promised you to shift emphasis from consumption to production that has promised you to develop the human capital of the youths that has promised you to build expansive and world class infrastructure that has promised you to restructure this country that has promised you to give you three layers of policing federal state and community that has promised you a robust foreign policy in this country who is peter obi has promised the north that he's going to secure them give them long-lasting permanent solution to their security give them their security that farmers will go back to the farm and make the northern land to be the next oil and gold. All right. He has promised these things, and he has are done you, it before you, in Anambra, you, 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 you and he really, will do it. You truly believe Nigeria, that he will deliver. Nigeria should vote for P2B, All and right. that's Ibaba. I just, I just wish I have time, because there are two issues I wanted us to discuss, but we cannot. The NOI poll, which actually gave your candidate an edge. As usual, not, okay, fine. Both, both local, both international, more than four times, okay. has said that P2B will win, and he will win. And then the He's the next president. President. forum today say yes. that they will not go for actually sectional pressing. Yes. So I hope you continue to prove to Nigerians that your candidate is actually a nationalist. Oh, yes, he is. Okay, finally, and he will finally, always be. finally, finally. Yes. Your supporters are actually on social media. They have been yes. preaching that if not Peter will be, yes. anything will happen. In one word, please. Yes. What will you tell them? That in the event in a transparent yes. election he wins. Yes. What will they do? What should they do? Yes. What I will tell you is that Obi has proved to be a man of compassion, a man of communication, a man of comprehension, a man of creativity, a man of commitment, a man of consistency, All right. a man of character, and finally, capacity, and, and competence. So what I'm you. saying is that Toby should be given a chance. All He's right. a new Thank person, you. a new generation. Thank you so very Nigeria much. Uh, Kenneth Okonko, person of OB Deputy Presidential Campaign Council for Committee to Program. I Thank wish we had more time. <laughs> Viewers, that's a wrap on today's edition. Do well to collect your permanent voters card and make a commitment to vote in the forthcoming election to guarantee a better future for all of us. Thanks for watching and do join us again. I'm Hamza Idris.